Hello, this is Reverend Doray Jacques Patlian teaching religious science, which is the teaching of the science of mind, sometimes called the perennial philosophy because it's been around virtually all through history, from Sarasota, Florida, where it's gorgeous today. Today, five steps to a happier life. Do you find yourself wishing that you were experiencing a happier life? Are you longing for someone who loves you, respects you, and enjoys your company? Do you try and try but just can't make and keep friends and lovers? Do you find yourself upset, angry, and complaining more and more often? Does it seem that nobody gets you and that you find yourself misunderstood and undervalued as a person? What in heaven's name is wrong? You think you're a great person. Why doesn't everybody else feel the same way? You know, you're not alone. You've got a lot of company. But here are five steps you can use today to enjoy your life more and have a happier, more fulfilled life. Step number one, lighten up. You were probably told, as I was, that life is serious business. My father used to say that often. Well, it's not. It's only serious if you make it serious. The truth is that life is merely what we call this journey through our time on earth. Life really doesn't exist except in our own mind. Yes, we're alive, but that thing we call life is merely us. We are life. If we are serious, life is serious. If we're full of fun and joy, then life is joyous. If we love, we will be loved. If we judge others, we will be judged. If we habitually get angry and fly off the handle, then we will not be liked, and we will be alone. Life is just a reflection of who and what we are from the inside out. Chill, relax, everybody gets through life, no one fails the course. Life looks and appears differently to every one of us because each one of us is unique. We all get to our destination. You know, it's not like chemistry or calculus, a tough class that we might well fail. No, some do it easy and some do it hard, but everyone graduates from life. How will you live life? Yes, it's totally your choice. No, God does not plan our lives. We do. God gave us all the gift of life and the power and authority to live it as we choose. But we get to live with our choices and the results. Nothing is personal. This is step number two. This comes from The Four Agreements, which is a great book. Pick it up on Amazon.com, The Four Agreements. You may want to stop taking everything personally. How often do you become offended by a slight or getting an uproar over nothing? You know, offense is a choice. The cold hard truth is that most people are way too busy living their lives and taking care of their own business to take time to intentionally offend you. I believe that 90% of offense taken is simply a misunderstanding. Now if someone calls you a no good SOB then take offense because that was definitely intentional. But otherwise just chill. Life is way too short to lurch from offense to offense and nobody likes a prickly person anyway. It's hard to make friends when we're in a state of high dudgeon from morning till night. Even if you are insulted or slighted, so what? You know the truth. You know who you are, so let it go. If the truth hurts because they hit a sore spot, they hit something that you know you weak in, Consider that the person who offended you did you the favor of mirroring something in you that you needed to see. Why not thank him or her instead of being upset? Now that'll really scratch their record because they don't expect that. Number three, your word is your bond. You know the only real treasure that can ne never be taken from us is our word, our honor, and our character. We may give it away by playing fast and loose with our promises, our veracity, and our moral compass, but nobody can steal it from us. Our word is the measure of who we really are. 
When you promise something or make a verbal or written contract with anyone, do you keep it even when it's inconvenient or perhaps hurtful? If you can answer yes, then you're a person of honor, therefore a person to be cherished, befriended, trusted, and loved. If your word is a sometime thing given only when it's convenient, then your word is but a china cup, easily broken but never totally repaired. You know, trust is a very delicate thing, easily shattered but seldom put right again. Without trust, there is no love. Love cannot flourish without trust. Friendship cannot thrive, and life becomes a series of crises and disappointments. Tending your life is a lot like tending a fire. So often we seem to behave like the man in a freezing cold room who yelled at the empty fireplace, Give me heat and then I'll give you wood. Doesn't work that way. First we give, then you receive measure for measure, pressed down and overflowing. If you want friends, first be a friend. If you want love, learn to love and do it often. If you want abundance, be abundant in your thinking, your giving, and be willing to receive. Because you see, if you won't receive your good, then no one can practice giving in their own life. You're keeping people from their higher good. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be answered unto you. Do you notice that you must be the first actor in every one of those situations? And then the universe, spirit, the great architect, God, whatever you want to call it, responds. And the last step, step five, is obey the law. I'm not talking about man's law here. Life and the universe operate according to law. Obey the law. Don't try to cheat it, get around it, shortcut it, or deny it. Because everything operates by law. And I do not mean man's law. I mean divine law. Now, I recommend that you obey man's law or be willing to pay the price. You know, if you can't do if you can't do the crime, don't do the if you can't do the time, don't do the crime, as they say. But that price is nothing compared to divine law. I am speaking of the spiritual and physical laws upon which all life, all that exists here or in places undreamed of, operates. There is order in all creation. It is not luck or fortune or caprice. It is law instituted before time began. Don't push the river. Don't swim upstream. Obey the law. We are all familiar with physical laws, the study of which is physics. Gravity will always work no matter who uses it. The saint and the villain are treated the same by the law. Heat will always rise, water will always flow downhill and seek its own level. For every cause there is an equal effect. Spiritual laws are even more important. What you sow you shall reap. That's cause and effect in action, the mother of all laws. As you think, so you are. Remember, thoughts are creative. They're the building blocks of your life. The whole universe is made out of thoughts, ours and the creator's. You speak the blessing and the curse out of your mouth each day. Words are things. They literally exist in time and space. So watch what comes out of your mouth because it creates your experience. Start today. Watch your thoughts. Think only of what you want, what you will allow in your life, and give no thought to what you do not want. Cease all complaints, negativity, and criticism. You know nobody likes a critic, so stop being a critic. Remember, what you sow, you must harvest. If you don't want it in your life, don't think it, and for sure, don't speak it. When you do this, you are obeying the law, and your life will be immeasurably happier. Until we're together again, be well, think well, and speak well. This is Reverend Doré Jacques Patley, and inviting you to visit me on youtube.com slash revdor and enjoy my 109 video podcast. It's ever so much fun to watch the video of this, and it will be out shortly. Until then, bye-bye for now.